short video module is going to introduce you to selling subscription services, provide a few tips, a few lessons learned um, by our business if you're about to go into a position where you're selling subscriptions or you may be in the future, or you might launch a product within your own small business where you'll be selling subscriptions on some type. Uh, you, should, you can learn from the mistakes we've made and the lessons we've made uh, by watching this short video. So first off, there's a few different types of uh, subscription agreements people can, uh, or that you could sell. The first could be a membership website where somebody pays $20 a month for access to certain resources. It could be audio resources, video, ebooks, articles that come out. Uh, next, you could be a service that you provide per month. It could be a software service or an actual physical service. You come to their office and do something for them once a month or once a week. The third type could be a product payment plan subscription where maybe a product is $10,000, but you can pay within 10 installments of $1,000 each. Those are the three basic types. They all have different strengths and places in business. Um, one tip we've found and learned the hard way is that most people on an industry average will cancel membership subscription websites after five to six months. Um, you know, lots of times after that amount of time, they've gotten some value, and you know, they didn't use as much as they thought, and they might drop out. So there's two lessons from that. One try to have things come in place that's kind of a drip system where it keeps them interested month after month. And two, consider that if you know someone might only join an average of five months at $20, it's only $100 in revenue, maybe it's better to make them pay $47 up front and then only pay $15. Or maybe it's better to have them pay um, on a scale where instead of $20 a month for the rest of your life, you basically say it's $700 for lifetime access or you can do a payment plan and over three months you pay off the $700 for lifetime access. Um, there's ways that you can you know, position your product and subscription service that you're trying to sell so that it makes more money knowing that most people might cancel in five to seven months. Um, not that they will in your industry with your product, but that industry average, that's basically what happens. Another tip is that weird things can happen when you let people in for free for the first month or a dollar up front. Lots of times they'll people join for that dollar and as soon as the $20 or $40 hit comes the next month, they'll just cancel. Um, they'll either forgot they signed up because they only invested a dollar, so whatever, I'll look at that later. And they never do. So when they get charged 40 bucks, they reverse it on their credit card or ask for a refund or say, oh, please cancel this. I never want to be billed again. There's no really investment on their part when it's a dollar. Um, so you'll get much more cancellations when people sign up for a buck. Um, you also get a bigger funnel, a lead funnel for that product. So the flip side of that is, once they pay the dollar, if you can get them engaged by sending them something in the mail, calling them on the phone, emailing them multiple times, that could counteract some of that and it could actually be more profitable for you. But it's just something to know that our business has learned that when you charge a buck up front, um, you know, it can have some unforeseen consequences. Uh, we have found that charging 30 or 40% of a product cost up front can help in terms of total profitability. If you're selling a $500 product, and you have a five-month payment plan of $100 a month, um, that can be good, but if someone cancels after two or three months, you're out about half the money, and that person says, well, didn't really use the product, so might as well cancel now because I don't see myself using it. Well, there's another way to go about that without changing your product at all uh, to secure your business better would be to charge $197 up front and then spread out the $300 over five months. That way, if they do cancel within the first two or three months, you've already collected 60% of the money or more, um, and they'll be less likely to cancel. They've already invested their money, they've made that decision, then they're more likely to continue down that path of using your product, using your service. And once they decide on that, they might get huge benefit of it. Some people just don't take the time to actually use your product or service like it should be used, and so they don't get the value out of it that they could be. Um, another tip is that um, every time that someone gets dinged with a subs subscription payment, in their mind, they're getting an email alert to that, or they see it on their credit card statement. In their mind, they have to decide, once again, should I stay within the program? It's not as, as explicit as actually having to click and enter credit card details, but it does come up in their mind for a second. Should I stay? Should I keep paying 20 bucks? Should I keep paying 100 bucks? Should I keep paying 1,000 bucks? And you have to have served enough value to them to justify that um, in their minds. It's really important to understand the psychology of that so you can make sure and over-deliver to your customers. Um, drip systems are membership website systems where content's released slowly over time, keeps people within the system better. Physical products do a good job keeping people in the system together. I subscribe to uh, a magazine which also provides me book, audio, 
summaries every month. I don't have enough time to read all the books I'd love to, so every month I'm sent an audio uh, summary of some books in the mail along with this business magazine, and it's a great service. I don't mind paying the 50 bucks a month because it saves me time, gives me value, and I can't forget about it. I get it in the mail and I say, oh cool, another audio CD for the car, and I listen to it and I get the value from it. So that's really smart of them, and that's another lesson I've learned in uh, membership websites that physical products can help remind people they're in it and get the value out of your membership. Uh, the last tip is just about breakpoints. Breaking points are dollar amounts where past that threshold you're going to have to de develop and deliver another level of service to uh, justify that price point. The price points we've found while charging subscriptions to thousands and thousands of people over the past seven years have been $20 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month, $300 a month, and $1,000 a month. I see our competitors and ourselves most effectively charging subscriptions when we're just under $20 a month, just under $50, just under $100, just under $300, just, uh, just under $1,000. Above those points, it seems to be another psychological threshold. You know, I haven't done sci scientific testing on this. But just in my experience, I've kind of learned things the hard way that if the subscription is too high or at some weird number, or that it feels too expensive, that people just won't sign up or they'll cancel early. So these are price thresholds that I've found to be very useful to kind of live by and just see where you know, this threshold would fall into place for the product and niche and industry that you're serving. I hope all these selling subscriptions tips helped you. These are things which are really, uh, just reviewing them to make this video of all the things we've learned about this has been helpful for me because we have learned a ton, um, again, the hard way through doing these and developing them ourselves and our businesses that we've ran. And so I hope you find these very useful as well. Again, this is businesstraining.com where you can earn master's level qualifications to help you make more money.